Well, good morning family. Happy, happy new year. This is the third day in the new year and we are happy to be uh, speaking on the word of God this morning and blessings of the new year. May the Lord uh, keep you safe this year and may you find it to be a safer year for you and as well as keeping yourself safe because the numbers of uh, corona infections are still rising so we ask you to please keep yourself safe your families and those around you as you start the new year and it's pouring out there so we're starting there on a good note with the rains and we thank a lot for that and this morning we are going to read from the well-known scripture um, we will get to John 3 16 but before that the preceding verses from chapter 3 verse 1 give an awesome account of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ where he was having a conversation with uh, Nicodemus so the account that is found in the conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus is uh, very fascinating to go through study and have an understanding at least of uh, the intents of the Lord with the conversations that he had with the men and that uh, all the conversations that he had was indicative of the reformation that was to come and in this instance that came to the life of Nicodemus so and how we learn as the church that this account is not really about Nicodemus this would remind us of Paul where he said of course I'm speaking right regarding the church and Christ or Christ and the church and but as we read down the, the verses we will have an understanding at least that this is talking about Christ and the church as well. Now, leadership of, of, of the man that he had, the profession that he had, is actually stated in these verses. But um, the interesting part of this is how transformation came to his life. And we later on realize that even his speech Oh, and the works that he did uh, were those of uh, a transformed man in the mind, as of course. Now, when you play a leadership role uh, or appear as a representative, at least the mandate which you carry is not about you, um, it is about the one who sent you, or, or and even those that you are sent to. So as those that are sent, we are not men of, of the hours. We are not more important than those that we are sent to. And these are the truths that need uh, to come to our realization that this is all about him who sent us. Very important, it helps us to come to a position of humility. Now we also learn how such men of great caliber and status uh, would submit to what God is doing in the current season and would want to know what he ought to do to be in the right standing with God. How he would uh, later show signs of transformation as we said earlier on that he was a great man and had already or had actually received uh, this message well from the Lord himself now and there has to be at least at least two uh, things that are evident in uh, of the inner workings of God in the person's life some signs needs to show something needs to be seen when God is at work in the person's life and at least two things needs to change the first one would be the speech of the person and 
the Bible would then tell us that the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So whatever we speak with our mouth, it comes from the heart. And really, uh, we have to understand that it is important to speak right. Very important to speak right. And what we say uh, has much to do with what we are. And the how part also is very important. We say things, how we say things shares a bit of a light of what person is about. Last week you would remember that we touched on um, the need to know how to or make a corrections to things with the right spirit. When something is wrong, it needs to be corrected but the spirit with which we correct things needs to be right. This can be done by people who have received transformation, who knows how to deal with things, who allow the spirit of God to lead in their speech, in how they do things. And then number two will be the works or the deeds. And uh, this is illustrative of intentions, one's character. Uh, if you want to, if you cannot know what the person is about from what they say, at least, then you should know who, what they are about from what they do. You follow the works, you get to know the person very well. So it is important as the church of God, as a child of God, to speak right. It is, a child, it is important as a child of God to live right. We listen to what you say. We also look at how you do things. It is important to have the right approach to things. So this account helps us with a bit of a light as to how we receive this weight and carry on with it in our day-to-day -day lives. So let's just read it this morning from the book of John chapter 3 from verse 1. And it reads, as follows there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews this man came to Jesus by night and said to him rabbi we know that you are a teacher come from God for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him Jesus and then answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from. And where it goes so is everyone who is born of the spirit Nicodemus answered and said to him how can these things be Jesus answered and said to him are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things most assuredly I say to you we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Interesting part of scripture. Now, the Bible says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. This man was one of the Pharisees and he was also the ruler of the Jews. And Jesus would also uh, call him a teacher of Israel. Uh, now, the account on Nicodemus is quite eye-opening insofar as it helps us with the insight of the transformation or even reformation that took place in his life. So, first of all, we, he was a Pharisee and totally against some of the teachings that came from Jesus. And uh, we, we start, as we study the history of the Pharisees, we learn to know that they were quite a, a disruptive bunch when teachings was being done, they would just interfere with their questions, trying to make a point that they know the scriptures and the laws, even that of Moses. Now, they were legalistic teachers of the law, which they did not even do, uh, and they were so strict on the law of Moses. Now, our attention to needs to also come to the fact that the Bible calls him ruler of the Jews. He understood the law and knew how to enforce the law. But we also need to understand or note that Jesus was also king of the Jews, as the Bible would call him. And Jesus had to come to address this man who was ruler of the Jews. Now, verse 2 would then say, This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God. Now, he, in this case, Nicodemus didn't use the method or the habit of the Pharisees of disturbing him during his teachings. But he studied the life of Jesus, he studied his teachings, because he says, we know, we know you, we know that you are a teacher from God. He must have followed Jesus' teachings and signs, because he says to Jesus that no one can also do these signs except he comes from the Lord, or except God is with him. Now, all teachings from the Lord Jesus was God authenticated everything that uh, Jesus did, the signs that he performed, the teachings that he gave, was God authenticated. That is why he would then say, a son can never do anything unless he sees it from, from the Father. Everything that Jesus would say would be exactly what the Father is, is, is saying. So, he was God authenticated all the teachings that he done and Nicodemus as a ruler could pick that up because he was a smart man he he knew the law he knew the scriptures so he could pick that up now there's a difference between knowing the scriptures and understanding the scriptures how we would soulishly interpret the scriptures and how would we would spiritually interpret the scriptures. Those two are quite different because it is possible to interpret them soulishly and even preach soulishly. Even prayer could come from the soulish point of view or soulish, the vantage point of the soul and also from the spirit as well. So it is important to understand that we need to transition from the soulish understanding of things and come to the spiritual understanding of things. This is where we allow the Lord himself to lead us into all knowledge that we need to know. So he could pick up that uh, from his teachings that he was from God. Now, like we said, the Pharisees were generally chaotic 
and would want to disrupt everything that Jesus said just to try and make it a point that they knew the, 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 the laws, they knew the scriptures, that they would appear uh, right before the eyes of men and attract unwanted and unnecessary attention. But now this particular Pharisee chooses to have a moment with the Lord and come to him at night. The rabbi, he said, uh, rabbi was regarded as my master, master that was uh, an honorable man. That's how they, 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 they would uh, address the sand ones as rabbi, as, as, as the teachers of the word of God would be addressed as rabbis. Now he says the rabbi which is to give him honor. Uh, so this is a sign of submission to higher authority and also to the word of God that comes through the sent ones. We are as the church to come to a position whereby we give the word of God highest honor and as we give the word of God highest honor we learn to also give honor to all men, give honor to those that bring the very same word to, to us uh, from God. So he said, we know that you come from God. First of all, when he says we, he's speaking for the corporate body. He's not speaking for himself alone. He says, we, myself and those that I oversee, myself and those that I lead, because most of them listen to me. I give directives. I give order. I tell them where to go. So myself and them, we have an understanding, or at least we know that you come from God. Why? Because we have studied you. We have studied the science. We have studied the way that you, you preach. So now, we speak of the Pharisees and, 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 and the very group that is anti-Jesus that didn't like him much because they thought they were the ones that have this message. We are recognize your origin. We recognize the mandate on your life. So now, but what we do not have is an understanding as to the weight that you are bringing. So give me share a little bit of light as to what do I need to to do here? So now the Jews also knows that he is from God simply because of their leader, which is of course Nicodemus. Now it is good for us to know the scriptures. It is good for us to know all the promises that were made to us by God. It is good for us to know what the scripture says about us and God our Father. I mean some of the challenges or most of the challenges that comes to us is through the thoughts in sessions is in the mind. So we need to be people who studies the scriptures, who knows what the scripture is, and who allow it time to fight off everything that is ungodly in us, including our thoughts, including how we do things, including how we say things. We need to know the scriptures. Most of the people who call themselves by the name of God don't have any clue whatsoever what the scripture says. Now his teachings were always indicative of what God is currently doing. It is very important to know that the scriptures or the word of God speaks on the current affairs. It does speak to us on the current matters at hand. So what we need to do, we go back to the scriptures allow the Spirit of God to redefine the scriptures that we even thought we knew. It is amazing how much we didn't know in the old season and we kept on preaching the word, we kept on confessing things without having an understanding or at least a, a redefinition of scriptures as to what the Lord is saying to us. But in the season we are so lucky that to, we are in a position that the Lord is revealing himself accurately to us in the late days that we live in and how we are as the children of God need to update ourselves in the 
Word of God. Now, the Bible is not just an ancient book as others refer to it, but rather a very powerful, um, a very powerful Word of God, a very powerful book um, with the current news of these days. So we have to update ourselves with the Word. God knows what's happening at the moment out there and the Word of God is there to help us stay intact with the Lord. Keep studying the Word. Keep listening from the Word. Be refreshed with the Word and you will have the strength to carry on and you will have the strength to have discipline in your lives and have an ear that hears when the Word of Authority is being given to you so that you stay saved. Now he says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There is a possibility, a chance given to us that we get to see the kingdom of God, but one has got to be born again. And again, one other thing that we need to pay attention to here is the honor in the responses of Jesus that are so refreshing and how he would give so much respect to the ruler why he himself is key but jesus here is one leader speaking to another one pastor speaking to another because when we study the history of the scriptures or at least the very same verse it where jesus calls him teacher of israel the men knew the word of god the new news the laws the prophecies the scriptures he knew all of this. That means this man was in the position of, uh, of overseeing the church or, or being a pastor, if you can put it that way, uh, for many years, even longer than Jesus. But here he is able to submit himself because of hearing this word that comes through the man uh, called Jesus. He says, I need to give this word a chance to come and help me because there's a time in our lives or even in the ministry that you get stuck if you are not being refreshed so the man needed to be refreshed by god he needed to be refreshed by the word of god and he needed this other man of god now the integrity in the whole conversations stop the whole conversation from spiraling out of control some have the tendency of blowing things out of proportion. The judgmental and confrontational conversations don't help anyone at all. If anyone feels judged and confronted, they lose it. So it is important that in our address and in our conversations, we always uh, try by all means to respect and deem one another higher than ourselves now the conversation was not confrontational it was not judgmental but i believe that it was strategic soul winning a strategic soul winning is where people feel loved than judged jesus didn't judge the man he loved the man and he gave him the weight that showed him the love of god as good soul winning is when I choose to lose quarrels but keep my brother in my life. What is the use of winning arguments and losing trust and friendship of, friendship of people that you love and I love? There's no need. It is useless to you lose people and win arguments that will not do anything good for me. But I need friendships. I need relationships in my life. So for me to keep those, I will sacrifice to losing all the arguments that we might find ourselves in. It's very, very important. Now Jesus chose to win a powerful preacher over who was a leader long before, before Jesus was. And simply not telling him how much he knows or uh, how much more he knows than him. Uh, he sacrificed those judgments and arguments by pointing Nicodemus to 
the word of God. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. One there being the enthetic indefinite pronoun. It does not refer to a specific person, but it speaks of many in one. This is a principle of, of representation, like when God addresses the corporate body through a sand one. And, and Nicodemus represented the Pharisees and the Jews, or the Jewish company of people, which is the corporate body of believers. So through Nicodemus, Jesus was addressing the whole company of the Pharisees and Jews. It is important, uh, or, or he was doing this on the importance of seeing the kingdom of God through being born of the will of God, because there is that of being, there is being born of the will of man and flesh, but there is also being born of the will of God. When our minds are renewed, we are able to prove that the will of God is first good acceptable and perfect so the perfection goodness and the acceptable things in god or in the will of god will be seen once our minds begin to be renewed it is important to have our minds renewed now nicodemus said to him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born so now this is an interesting question but for a man who wants to know it is a very powerful question that needs to be addressed and uh, now it is also it is good to always want to be the student of the word of God at all times irrespective of the position we hold in the community we need to be continuously uh, studying and knowing the word of God especially those who are leading the group of people who makes up the household of faith learn to learn from others and that is why I believe that Nicodemus would have told Jesus off I mean with his credentials and long service in the ministry he would have told jesus off and said look i've been in the ministry long enough longer than you you cannot tell me anything he would have called the message of jesus this new thing i will not take it but the man of his caliber and status chose to humble himself and listen to the word that came to him by Jesus because even Jesus himself observed protocol and honored the man so it is very important to have honor in what we do now to do away with the old because remember now here's Nicodemus saying I'm old how can I go back for a second time into my mother's womb and and be born again a restoration has to come in his life and a recognition that being born again is through the water and spirit like Jesus says the one would should be born again by water and spirit and of course water being symbolic of the weight of God when the Bible speaks of the water we know that is symbolic of his weight and now the spirit speaks of the and the Holy Spirit of God which the Bible would then say about that every scripture that is inspired by the Spirit of God that means the Spirit of God comes to witness the very way comes to influence and inspire the very way that it may be able to help convict us when the Spirit of God convicts us to come and receive him as our Lord and Savior that is through preaching of his word or receiving his word so the word of God and the Spirit of God goes together we cannot separate the two uh, so they must always go together so one is born again with the water and with the Spirit Wow now do you get born again with the water and the Spirit the water which is the word of God has to be spoken 
and the ears has to hear. That means for one to be born again with the water and the spirit, somebody has got to preach the word of God and somebody has got to listen to the word of God. That is where the Holy, the Holy Spirit will then convict the heart of the listener to receive the message that is being spoken. So principle of representative also works again in this portion powerfully so so it is important to really understand that in our lives now nicodemus nigo noticed that he was still doing things as per the pharisees and the jewish programs and patterns that was the old way of doing things he was still still at the old settings he needed to be reformatted and rebooted and have a new program installed in him and this realization only comes when we allow the lord a moment of our time to speak the lord needs to speak to us and we need to allow him to speak and of course the lord is a gentleman he would never force anything on us he would always give us a, an opportunity to make our own choices whether we take him on his weight or not so there was a time of unlearning in the life of Nicodemus a time to do away with the stale bread and receive the word of God as it dripped like you from the lips of the Lord himself uh, what an advantageous position he was in being in a position as a child of God or as the church to be uh, to receive the word of God as the send ones begin to speak the word of God and begin to implement this word in our lives and begin to see the Lord in our lives so uh, uh, we need to give God's word a chance before we fight it off sometimes people have a tendency of saying aha I'm not gonna listen to that they just shut off but it is um, only fair that we listen to the Word of God give it chance the Word of God comes to us in the form of a seed give that seed a chance to come uh, let it find ground in us so that it can begin to form make a formation which is will, will be Christ so uh, uh, much like uh, we have a choice to allow transformation to take place in our lives God is able to do all things through his weight the word of God is powerful like I said before it's not just an ancient book it is the living word of God we give it a chance to work in our lives we begin to see the good things that the Lord wants to do in our lives now old is like he says how can a, a man when he is old go back for the second time to be born again old is a default setting it's a default setting and all of us have our own default setting even even in the in the church cycles some of us were born again in the uh, reformation season some of us were born again in the charismatic season and some in the Pentecostal season so each one of us has the default settings in them how things were happening or what season were they in when they first gave their lives to Jesus now this old default setting generally and it leaves grime and stains of self preservation this is this is talking about the old self in the man the old self the old way of doing things the uh, the old way of fending for yourself it leaves stains of self-preservation doing things for yourself it's it's got a touch of uh, the orphan spirit in it that you fight for yourself no one will fight for you uh, you are loved less because you don't have anyone that cares about you that spirit is dangerous it causes isolation uh, and it's, it's it's not friendly to <laughs> believe you me it's not friendly so now this spirit spirit uh, leaves those marks stains even when the Lord 
is bringing us over to into his marvelous light now our default chooses to keep our own tradition our own cultures and beliefs of what we believe to be right it's amazing how some cultures were formed by people who thought they were doing things right uh, whereas they were just being against the word of God it's amazing how some beliefs came up popped up in some cultures and people started believing that they were true and the cultures um, remember that our cultures makes us different we are not different once we come to understand and learn the culture of our heavenly father because now the culture of our heavenly father says we are one new man we are we, we are family we are one in god the culture of god is that of oneness you would remember uh, he had the culture of oneness yes so that is the culture of our father but our own man-made culture says you are different because you have a different skin complexion you are different because you live in a certain vicinity or in a certain suburb different from others you are located differently you earn differently you live in different houses you drive different motor vehicles so a culture has got a lot of things that wants to push people aside from one another the spirit that says you are not one man you are not family you are not in the culture of oneness those are man-made cultures that are so evil and that creeps on people some are so deeply engraved in the people that they would rather choose to serve god and cultures god and their beliefs God and their own traditions but when we come to Christ we understand that it's only his culture that of oneness we don't see each other after the color of our skin or what we have or don't have but we are one family in Christ now let's just read uh, 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 interesting part of scripture here as well it says therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh even though we have known Christ according to the flesh yet now we know him thus no longer therefore if any man is in Christ he is a new creation old things have passed away behold all things have become new so when transformation has occurred our views changes what was green is now green so we begin to see things for what they really are and things begin to make more sense and god is given the seed of honor in our lives you will remember the song i see the lord i am lifted up seated on the throne of my life so we begin to even have worship in our lives because god begins to take uh, uh, this highest seat of honor in our lives he begins to lead he begins to be our protection and and and, and our covering from where his grace and his grace begins to drip in our lives and we begin to understand that we are children of God and how we live has got to be as uh, uh, by the design of God in, in, in our lives now flesh does not when we come to this position flesh does not interpret to us no more no more soulish interpretation of who God our Father is because so your soul will tell you that you need to help God your flesh will tell you that God cannot do it but your spirit will say God is able to do everything that he said he would do now uh, but we understand we praise we even pray from the vantage of the spirit we understand now we are children of God we are a son of God how do we approach our father now how do we address him how do we worship him how do we pray to him 
our prayers are not commanding and rude anymore where we tell him what to do and we say so be it we are not rude anymore but we know that and have an understanding that we are talking to our papa uh, daddy so we have to approach our daddy with more respect and honor and and give him reference and that he, he deserves as our father now uh, this is the change that comes when we are being transformed and when we are in Christ there is a peeling off and the falling away of old self when Christ is being revealed to us whenever the Word of God comes to us there's a revelation of Christ that comes to us and when that happens there's a peeling off and falling away of the old self of the old habits of the old way of doing things of the old understanding of doing things default setting gives way to the new setting of the lord we no longer falter back into our default setting but we stay intact in the lord that's how we operate now and the old pharisee nicodemus gives way to the new nicodemus in Christ this is what has to happen the old self goes now the new one will appear in Christ when those in leadership position are bowed to the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ the joy the peace and the protection is given to the whole body this immunity that comes to the whole body now as it goes down further now we will come to verse 16 where it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved we are saved through him not condemned now the son of god which is the church of course was sent not to condemn the world you see uh, the pattern um, uh, or the, the pattern's purpose is to make more of the same makeup him coming here was that you come as the pattern and then from that pattern there's a cutting that needs to be done and that should be the church that's the lifestyle of the church that takes after Christ and and when the world takes a look they need to see him through those that uh, we call church or uh, firstborn believers or the first fruits and and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ now God released from himself the only thing that was crafted after his being something that would not compromise but keep the original design which is his son the only begotten of god is not one person he does not speak of one person but one skin in which many membered sons come to one spirit and one hope this is a very broad teaching that we all need to come to an understanding of but at least a little bit of the light that um, we need to have from this portion that and have an understanding that of who we are in him of who we are in, in, in Christ for an example multiple function of the Godhead which dwells bodily in Christ when you read Colossians 2 9 and we would also hear God referring to the nation of Israel as his son son of God it is our family identity that looks beyond color like we said race culture and weaknesses when we become a son we have our seat at the table and the honor is not levels and position but the knowledge of who I am when a child of God recognizes or realizes who he is and being honored by the Lord and it's not about levels and positions but it is about us getting to know him more as our father and understanding like we said also last week that 
when we come into the family there's no competitive spirit because we are family the family of God now Christ is the gift for us and the church is and should be the model of the stature of the measure of the fullness of Christ and it stands as the representative that would not be opinionated about <laughs> anything but always give an ear to the master I believe truly that the church should be the ear pierced ear pierced born servant of the Lord that would regard everything as the Lord because as a born servant you regard everything as of the Lord you own nothing everything gives glory to 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 the Lord you would remember even in in when you read about the born servants in the Bible it would say even their spouses did not believe belong to them they would belong to their masters so as we come with this attitude in the things of God we get to realize that we give glory and honor to the Lord with what we have everything that we have reminds us that God so much loved us that he gave himself to us so everything help us to be appreciative of the fact that God loves us and has made sure that we have everything that we need so the presence of the weight of God in a man has the requirements of high moral standing. It will not compromise the truth one, that is for sure. It will always, it will always remind us of the truth. The Holy Spirit is there to help us to know and understand and be reminded of the true truth of the word of God and everything that is ungodly and everything that wants to uh, come against the truth of God the word of God is always there to fight it off from us now Christ was fully formed in Jesus as it is a requirement that he be formed in us it is important Paul says I groan in pain that Christ be formed in you it is important that he be formed in us you see it is good to have a full church in numbers but it is if it is empty of the very life of Christ then it is empty and dead the church must be full of the weight if the weight has been taken out of the place or the household of faith called church if there is no way there that place is empty and that place is dead remember we said it will either be social or political gathering if there is no weight in that place it is very very important that the word of God be found in a place called church even in our lives the caution we take daily even now with corona out there the caution we take daily of making sure we are clean we wash ourselves constantly all the time this is the same caution that each and every one of us needs to take make sure that we keep washing in the word of God keeping ourselves clean with the word of God the word of God is able to keep us clean from all dead now when Christ is being formed in the man, there is an ongoing sacrifice that one has to make. Sacrifice of self-will and the sacrifice of self-centeredness and everything self. So self has got to give way to the will of God, to what God wants us to come true. And Jesus Christ is not only our template until the cross, but far beyond the cross we have so much to learn from him post crucifixion there is a call for an ascended life in the life of the church we are being called to the ascended life we need to raise the bar ascend into in the things of God come to a place whereby the landscape views begin to look better we need to come to the peaks 
in the spirit you would remember how Jesus would ascend uh, all the time and this is the life of a child of God we need to have an ascended life this is how we are being transformed in the renewing of our minds begin to see things from um, this uh, the view of God at least from how the Lord would actually see things now when we read uh, in the book of John chapter 7 verse 50 we find that Nicodemus begins to have a different opinion on the proposed judgment of Jesus they proposed that Jesus be brought because they wanted to judge him they wanted to question him they wanted to have their way with the Lord Jesus Christ but now Nicodemus seems to have a different view as to how or what should happen because the Pharisee says he should be here why to the officers that were sent why did you not bring him in because we want him here we want to question him we want to speak with him and of course the intent being they wanted him to be led to crucifixion and and then all of those but now Nicodemus uh, suggests differently he suggests differently that he proposes that he be given a chance he be given a chance remember now this is the very man who is part of the Pharisees the very the group that wants Jesus now he says now this man be given a chance be given a chance how do you rush into judging him before you even hear or know what he is all about so now the, this, this 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 comes as a surprise to all of them but this is the result of the weight that he received from the Lord beginning to help him judge matters with no biasness um, but being fair on the matter and being fair on the main but had he not received the weight from the Lord Jesus Christ he would have thought the same way they did but the word of God came into his life and began he began to make a transition or at least have a different views on matters uh, concerning uh, the weight that Jesus had brought he says this man needs to be given a chance so there's a transition there there's a change of 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 of, of how he sees things in in his life there's a change on how he judges matters based on the word of God that came into his life it's it brings to our attention as to how the word of God can help us have a clear mind have a so sober mind because even the word encourages us to be sober minded not to be a double minded not to be flip floppers not to be uh, uh, what you call not to be uh, when you are not hauled no no cold not to be lukewarm because the Lord says you are not hot you are not cold so I will spit you out of my my mouth so the Bible uh, encourages us to 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 have a set standing to have a firm standing in what uh, we come into believing and also when we read John chapter 19 verse 39 it says the same man brings man and aloe to embalm the body of Jesus Christ this is quite a surprise this man being the ruler of the Jews the teacher in Israel and uh, the Pharisee he now now you, you check these verses from him coming to Jesus as night to him now in a position of saying no don't be so quick to judging the man to come into a position whereby Jesus now needs to be buried Joseph of Arimathea has just asked for the body of Jesus now Nicodemus is now um, part of this team that needs to now embalm the body of, of Jesus Christ and for burial prepare it for for the burial now the word has not only transformed this man but brought forth the seven wood spirit in him 
somebody who's willing to save others somebody who's willing to lose things that he would even call possessions for the sake of others helping him to serve others and remember that servanthood is part of sonship so the transition in his life was remarkable in so far as just from receiving his message his life is beginning to change and now on this particular chapter we see him how he becomes and uh, now the servant in the way in in, in, in how so far as how he and joseph were to help with the bombing of the the body of jesus christ preparing it for for burial this is one of the key things that the church needs to realize we serve others seven dood spirit is very important in our transformation in how the lord wants to move us from point a to point e b now even though nicodemus is a ruler he only understands now he understood birth from the natural side of things but now jesus had to come and say look not only is it from the natural point of view we will need to also understand birth from the spiritual point of view that which comes by the will of god the father because now the will of god as it comes to us it comes in the form of a seed and now our heart needs to be a prepared environment that works as a ground that will or that is able to receive the seed as it comes and it has to find ground in our hearts if it doesn't find ground but rocky places in our hearts then the seed will not uh, go through stages of growth and formation it has got to find ground so we need to be in a position as the church where we ask the lord to help us uh, soften our hearts make our hearts ready to be able to receive the word of god as it comes to us there is a danger lately in the church at at, at, at large church globally maybe if you would that people have a tendency just to come to the buildings where uh, the households of faith buildings uh, where we would call it church we say people have a tendency where to come to a place called church where uh, the attitude is not to come and say god or oh lord i bring my life before you so that you may be able to teach me direct me in uh, all the steps that i need to take but the tendency is that people come just to show off people come just to uh, spend time and have fun it's an outing for some but for some is really an, an obedience to his word and submission to the word that comes to us so but as the church i advise us that we give the word of god as the seed a time to find ground in our hearts and allow it to find a position or a place in our hearts where it begins to take formation and as that formation takes place we come into a position where cry where paul says i groan that i groan in pain that christ be formed in you and when christ begins to be formed in us we have been transitioned or we transition from a position of not knowing him and starting to get into or getting to know him better and allowing him to lead us into all his righteousness because as the church we need the leadership of the lord we need to be led by lord by the lord we need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds have an understanding that the old setting in our in our thinking patterns has got to give way to the pattern of god which brings us peace joy that is in god now with this said i would like to say may the lord apportion you and uh, the grace for uh, the beginning of the year and be fruitful and multiply this year may the lord give you peace may the lord 
teach us all to be safe and be wise please use wisdom this year ask wisdom from the lord as to how we are to live from now on forth and allowing him to be the leader in our lives whether at uh, in, in 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 our marketplaces whether at being at home but please use wisdom as to how you want to live your life from now on now may the grace of the lord uh, be with you and may god continue to strengthen you may god continue to give you love and peace and protection throughout the year great grace to you thank you and god bless